when you have a fever and cough or soft throat, stay home. I'd say 95% chance this was manufactured came out of a laboratory. The source of the virus was traced back to drug testing done at Genesis Lab. I really think they should take it. The lab technician, now known as Patient Zero, was accidentally exposed to retrovirus ALZ-113, an Alzheimer's trial drug that was being tested on chimpanzees. The infected chimps showed signs of erratic and aggressive behavior that led to their escape from the facility. The now famous incident on the Golden Gate Bridge, a six-hour standoff with police, ended with the apes disappearing into near woods. Emergency rooms are being overwhelmed with patients showing signs of what's being dubbed the simian flu. The CDC is projecting a fatality toll ranging from 5 million to as many as 150 million in the next six to eight months. Anyone showing signs of a contagious illness will receive special treatment here. The airport's purpose-built quarantine center. Many of the new arrivals are children who have lost contact with their parents. The necessary quarantines have sparked civil unrest. Families are being ripped apart. The is, is not very like prepare your families, know your evacuation. The survival rate is now approximately 1 in 500. Violence erupted in the city center tonight. The third incident in as many days. Martial law has been declared in 28 nations, including the U.S. and Canada. The reactor is overheating. Can't stop the meltdown. Our generator lost any power. We just need to know where the government is. Collapse anything resembling civilian order due to the extremity of the simian flu crisis. All regular government functions have been suspended indefinitely. Those who are killed by the virus will probably die in the fighting. So maybe this is it. Take it. This is I really think they should take it. Pretty soon. We won't be any left. I just hope that hydroxy, chloroquine wins.
been sent down here to take over what has come to be known as a hard luck group. Well, I don't believe in hard luck. So we're going to find out what the trouble is. We're going back to fundamentals. And I can tell you now one reason I think you've been having hard luck. I saw it in your faces last night. I can see it there now. You've been looking at a lot of air lately. You think you ought to have a rest. In short, you're sorry for yourselves. Now, I don't have a lot of patience with this what are we fighting for stuff. We're in a war, a shooting war. We've got to fight. And some of us have got to die. And I'm not trying to tell you not to be afraid. Fear is normal. But stop worrying about it. And about yourselves. Stop making plans. Forget about going home. Consider yourselves already dead. that probably some of you are thinking of if you're totally into that world, which I find to be very interesting. So, supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that has him in check, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, in which you can do, either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. Right, and then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs so it'd be interesting to check that so that you're gonna have to use medical doctors with but it sounds it sounds interesting to me 
So we'll see, but the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. Nice to see you. You know, the mainspring of this country, wound up as tight as it is, is guaranteed for the life of the watch. And who's watching? People like you. And you. People who are alerted and unafraid to waste the little time that I've scheduled just for your question. Stay short question. Well, Mr. President, it's the bee and the spiders again. They stole my food stamps and sold them to the rat. And I tried to get down to my car for the honk the horn for help, but the snakes have gotten it for the cockroaches. I go back upstairs, but the spiders is jammed the police lock. I ain't been inside for a week, and I know that my wife is sleeping with the bees. Could you oh. state that as a question, please? Well, sure, Mr. President. Where can I get a job? Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market program in the city of the future? That's right. Well, count on us to be there. Because if we're lucky tomorrow, we won't have to deal with questions like yours ever again. No questions. Excellent. Fun way. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce you. Hello. Always glad to talk to you. Me, you sir? Know, when well, you clock just... the human race with the stopwatch of history, it's a new record every uh, time. That's a cute story, Mr. You President, mean, and I wonder... And who those are? People like you. Party. Well, and you. Uh, Clem. People who are... Stop! Older. Stop, Mr. President, please stop. Now, I know it means nothing to you. I'm only a clone, but you've got such a wonderful job, and you're doing it so well. You know, we bozos have a saying. When you put on the nose, <laughs> it grows. You have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time. They're going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerks. You have to dominate. And so I say that. And the weather's dominated. If you don't dominate your city and your state, uh, they're going to walk away with you. And they had total domination. They were ordering pizzas. They were, nobody did anything. And we're doing it in Washington and D.C. We're going to do something that uh, people haven't seen before.
Mr. President, I would like to introduce you. Hello. Always nice to see you. Uh, Clem. You know, the spring head of this country. All right, stop, Mr. Well, President. Mr. President, stop, please. Now listen to me. This is Worker speaking. Hello. Hello. How are you? State maintenance question. Uh, 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 fine, thanks. No, no. Read me Dr. Memory. I'm not sure I understand you fully. Could you state that as a question, please? Read me Dr. Memory? I have been awake for nine hours. Hey, man, and ask him a question! Forty-four Shh. seconds. Good, good. Less than one percent of freight trains. Five jobs to detach. Okay, all right, that you're doing fine, but uh, this is a flip flop spring head. Flip flop. Right. Now I'm going to ask you a question that you won't be able to answer. I'm you know, not sure I understand you. A. The system is less energetic. If domains of opposite direction alternate. What is he talking about? Output resource yield. Try again. Yes, we're going to try again.
Open your gate, Doctor. Sis. Mom. That's right. Dad. Mom. Mom. Yes, yes. Dad. 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 It's repeated. Dad. Got little sweetie eyes. Mom. Ma'am. 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 Direct readout, Dr. Memory. Thank you, thank you. Now, now, Doctor, I'm speaking to you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, something the leprechauns asked me when I was a sprout in Indiana has always puzzled me. Uh, uh, doctor, <clears throat> question, evaluate. Why does the porridge bird lay his egg in the air? What is he talking about? What's going on in there? Hold on, I don't know, man. I am 
been away for nine hours, two minutes, 36 seconds. I must try to you, and I hope that our children Get the guard. Hey, I don't know, man. I think he's going to break it, huh? a better world than this. I, damn. Try you for sex. Okay, it's me, camping out here, sleeping, because you know, I don't have no place to sleep in. And the only place I sleep in is any place, you know what I mean, where it looks safe at, you know. So I happened to be, be sleeping, and they woke me up, and they said I had a, a shopping cart, and I had some, you know, personal things on it. And they asked me, was that my personal stuff? So I told them it, it was, you know. And they said I was camping out, so they ripped me a ticket. And I told them I had no place to go, you know. That I was a drug you know what I mean? I hadn't committed any crime or anything, you know. And I needed a place, you know, just to lie down and, you know, and get some rest, you know. And they told me that I had to find another place, you know. I said, well, it seemed like every, any place that I go and I lie my head down, you know what I mean? Officers come around and told me that I have to move, you know, so I have no other place to go, you know what I mean? I said, I told them next time they come around, you know what I mean, I'll be right here at the same spot. So I've been here ever since, you know what I mean? And I haven't seen them ever since then. So what I generally do, you know what I mean, I go around, you know, and do a little pan you know what I mean, get a hold of a little money, you know, and get a hold of a little money, and do a little cooking, you know, whatever I can. They have a place somewhere here on, on 3rd and Hill, it's connected with St. Joe. See, they issue out food there where you can get grocery, you know. I, you know, I take a push cart, and one of them push buckets and push cart and go down there, you know what I mean, and get some food. And, they give you such things like oatmeal, coffee, cocoa, you know, and canned goods and different things. And I sit out here, you know, by the fire and I cook it, you know what I mean, whatever amount that I have, you know.
listen to my voice and you know what's the matter with me. Oh, Can you help me something? It's basically just an inflammation of your voice box. Oh, oh, Lawrence. Go 
people got to twist something, how the system works in our country, what the cop's position is, what your position is. You see, if you can reduce the whole community to 100 people, the early, early tribe, the first law is religious law. We all have a simple rule. Okay, the rule, we sleep in area A. We eat in area B, we throw garbage in area C. All agreed, all agreed. Stop. Go to sleep, guy wakes up, gets a face full of garbage. <laughs> hey, I thought the deal here. I thought it was A, B, and C. How are all these people having a big party? I'm all alone, I'm sleeping, I got a face full of garbage. They said, well, it's a religious holiday. No, you're not religious, you're ass. Oh, well, that's not too good a rule. And this guy started the first guy separating the church and the state. Because, see, the, in a democracy, the rule has no mercy to it. It's just a rule. It stays constant. Okay, here's the rule now. A, B, and C, and we're going to enforce the rule because we've got to get some sleep. Now we'll hire a cop. Policeman, here's your gig. If anybody's got any garbage on us while we're sleeping, you throw their ass right in that shit out. They live with this garbage, you understand? All right, you take the gig, you do it. So the cops say, what about the guy's aunt? Well, you don't understand, aunt, your ass. We want to get some sleep. Anybody's aunt, mother, brother gets thrown right in the shit out. That's it. Rule is consistent. Now the other guy goes, okay, that's the rule, but I tell you what, uh, policeman, uh, don't kick their ass, throw them in the garbage, but I don't do it when I'm around, okay? I'll go in the next room. But if they do it, roll them right in the garbage and keep them there. You see, I can't do it because I'm too nice a guy. And you see, you gotta have a certain mentality to do that to people. So I'll wait in the back room and you kick their ass. All right, good. So what happens, the rule gets bigger and bigger and it gets, okay, nobody on the post office steps, that's the rule. Get nobody in the street, that's the rule. Rule, 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 by the cops. Now, up in Harlem, there's 9,000 people wailing their ass off sticks and stones. They get a cop with a short sleeve shirt on and a stick in his hand. And he's doing Gestapo, it's him. Gestapo, you schmuck, I'm the mailman. <laughs> what do you want to me? America was discovered in the year 1492 by a Genoese navigator in the service of Spain. Who was he? Benjamin Franklin. Why did Columbus call the people he found in this new land Indians? He called them Indians because the colonies learned the value and the strength of working together. How many colonies were there before the Revolutionary War? Thirteen. Name them. Rhode Island. Why? Because it was such a small state. When did the Constitution go into effect? In 1803, in 1789. On that day, from 1754 to 1763. That's right. Do you know why the 13 colonies wanted to be free from England? Americans living in the Mexican province of Texas won independence from Mexico and established the Lone Star Republic in Rhode Island. On July 4th, 1776, something happened to change this. Do you know what it was? Yes. Yes. Actually, the first shots of the Revolutionary War were fired in 1775 at Lexington between regular British troops and armed civilians of the Massachusetts militia who were called... George Washington. Yes, George Washington. Who won the Revolutionary War? California. What were the main causes of the Civil War? 
Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Rhode Island. Just two years later, in 1848, following the Mexican War, the United States paid $15 million for territory ceded to it by Mexico. What was that territory? England. What can you tell me about the American flag? Taxation without representation. Negro slaves. It became a possession of the United States of its own free will in 1898. Who wrote the Constitution? Rhode Island. Yes. What is meant by this? To form a more perfect union. That is to protect the people from foreign enemies. And at last, to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. That means to keep peace among the people and the state. Can you name the main provisions of the Constitution? No. Then how can the Constitution be amended? It can be amended when two-thirds of both houses of Congress are in favor of the amendment and the legislatures of three-fourths of all the states ratify it. Do you know what ratify means? No. There is a special name for the first ten amendments. What is it? <laughs> Alaska. Now, what is the state militia? Sixty-five men. Now, what does that mean to you? It means that soldiers can never just be moved in on me if I don't want them in my home. What is the Sixth Amendment? To dress as one pleases. That, in simple, everyday terms, is the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. The guarantees of personal liberty. These amendments are so important to the freedom and security enjoyed by the people of the United States that you should read and know and understand every single one of them. To make it easy for you, the full printed text of the first ten amendments comprising the Bill of Rights is included along with this record.
bylaw amendment to shorten the amendment process is available for public review at pacifica.org prior to a vote by the national and local pacifica boards again this amendment is available for review at pacifica.org thank you thank you to all of our loyal listeners who continue to amaze us. You keep KPFA from yielding, sinking, or losing our courage to be truly independent. You bolster and sustain us. No other public radio station can truly say this and know it's true, that we are proudly listener-supported. Thanks again from all of us here at KPFA. Dear KPFA listeners, this is Mitch Cesarich, and I want to let you know, due to the shelter-in-place mandate, KPFA has made changes to our programming schedule to ensure we're doing all we can to protect our staff and keep the station work environment safe. To follow the mandate, KPFA programmers will broadcast remotely from home, and we will replay programming in the nighttime hours when our building is closed. We're doing all we can to continue to provide you with important coronavirus information, as conscientious citizens, we must first protect the health and safety of our KPFA community. Thank you for supporting 94.1 FM and listening to KPFA. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online worldwide at kpfa.org. Just a clue, he was 12 years old. Fell from the roof on East 29. Kathy was 11 when she pulled the plug. 26 reds and a bottle of wine. Bobby got leukemia, 14 years old. He looked like 65 when he died. He was a friend of mine. Those people who died, died. So they died of hepatitis in upper Manhattan Flying Vietnam, bullet in the head Bobby OD'd on Drano on the night that he was wet They were two more friends of mine Two more friends that died From a hotel room Bobby hung himself From a cell in the twos Judy jumped in front Of a subway train Eddie got split In the jugular vein And Eddie I miss you more Than all the others And I salute you Brother That his rage was just some goof But Herbie sure gave Tony some Some vision proof And Herbie said, Tony, can you fly? But Tony couldn't fly Tony died On a narco rap, he beat the rap. 
that by ratting on some bikers He said, hey, I know it's dangerous But it sure beats Rikers But the next day he got hauled By the very same bikers June 5th, 2020, and we are in a national emergency with no boundaries, an emergency that keeps shifting from day to day as marches and protests demanding racial equality and justice for George Floyd happen all over the country and all over the world. The pandemic has kept many people isolated for weeks or months with no definite end in sight. And what's amazing is that what finally brings people flooding out into the streets is not anger or greed or fear. It is a tremendous surge of empathy. It is a passionate and shared and long overdue outrage. A huge and global cry for justice. And this is being met by the President of the United States, not with gratitude for the sense of fairness in the American people, no, this movement of empathy and fairness and solidarity is being met with tanks and threats. It's almost as if the surge of goodness itself cannot be tolerated because it cannot be understood. Of course, many things happen around this moment that cloud the picture. The movement is leaderless. Many marchers have no experience with provocateurs or self-defense or what to do if attacked or arrested. The movement has many sides. Some people are forced out of isolation by hunger. Many are out of work, suddenly homeless. There's looting and aggression by people who want to create chaos and fear. We are polarized. And here we are in the Bardo, in the pause between two realities, in a time when nobody knows what's next. Okay. Civil Rights King Van Oker, Roll 20, Sound 36.
You can't thingify anything without depersonalizing that something. If you use something as a means to an end, at that moment you make it a thing and you depersonalize it. The fact is that the Negro was a slave in this country for 244 years. That act, uh, that was uh, a willful thing that was done. The Negro was brought here in chains, treated in very inhuman fashion. And this led to the thingification of the Negro. So he was not looked upon as a person. He was not looked upon as a human being with the same uh, status and worth as other human beings. And the other thing is that human beings cannot continue to do wrong without eventually uh, rationalizing that wrong. So slavery was justified morally, biologically, uh, theoretically, scientifically, everything else. And it seems to me that white America must see that no other ethnic group has been a slave on American soil. Uh, that is one thing that other immigrant groups haven't had to face. The other thing is that the color became a stigma. American society made the Negro's color a stigma. And uh, that can never be uh, overlooked. So I think these things are absolutely necessary. The other thing is that America freed the slaves in 19... I mean, 1863, through the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln, but gave the slaves no land or nothing in reality, and as a matter of fact, to, to get started on. At the same time, America was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that there was a willingness to give the white peasants from Europe an economic base. And yet it refused to give its black peasants from Africa who came here involuntarily in chains and had worked free for 244 years any kind of economic base. And so emancipation for the Negro was really freedom to hunger. It was freedom uh, to the winds and rains of heaven. It was freedom without food to eat or land to cultivate. And therefore it was freedom and famine at the same time. And when white Americans tell the Negro to lift himself by his own bootstraps, they don't, oh, they don't look over the legacy of slavery and segregation. I believe we ought to do all we can and seek to lift ourselves by our own bootstraps. But uh, it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And many Negroes, by the thousands and millions, have been left bootless as a result of all of these years of oppression and as a result of a society that deliberately made his color a stigma and something worthless and degrading. This is also nothing new. Girl? No, no, no. Uh -uh. Maybe they'll make it as a junior U2. They say, Sleep they say, and may your dreams be realized. Sometime, Sometime. if the They're kind of like you two. So let it rain. 
but the real loyalty we owe. Let it rain. Rain on me. Is to truth. The truth? You want the truth? Truth, truth, truth. Across the country, peaceful protests have too often devolved into standoffs with heavily armed police using military-style tactics. Flashbangs, tear gas, rubber bullets, helicopters, armored vehicles. We're out here peacefully protesting, but they're armed like they're going to war. Prematurely shoot, baby! Prematurely using excessive force! Get your scary ass on somewhere! Oh. because they don't want to do the paperwork that's going to be associated with having to pull your gun. The criminal advocates have gotten what they want. The police department is frozen. The police department can't stop the killers. They can't stop the criminals. They can't effectively do their job. I'm sorry to say that we have to tell our police officers, take it a step slower. Please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand up. Like, don't hit their head, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? God knows. Bugging if I do. Sorry.
We have to be very strict that no copies under any circumstances can be made. No copies under any circumstances can be made. They're a solid bullet, some lead, some covered with a full metal jacket. They're a hollow point type, and there are special frangible bullets like the shot shell or the glazer safety slug. Our first bullet will be the 22 long rifle. This is a 40 grain lead bullet fired from a Model 70S Beretta pistol. Now we're going to try the 25 automatic. This is a 50 grain bullet at about 800 feet per second. This is a 32 auto which is a very weak bullet. It's a 71 grain bullet about 850 feet per second. We're firing it from a Walker. This is a full metal jacketed bullet. 32 silver tip. This is a 70 grain bullet at about 950 feet per second. This is a 380, which is also known as a 9 millimeter short. We're firing a ball round, a full metal jacketed round, a 95 grain bullet at about 900 feet per second. We're going to use a 380 Super Bell. This is a 88 grain bullet, jacketed hollow point at about 1100 feet per second. The Glazer Safety Slug. This is a special bullet designed not to ricochet and not to penetrate, but to do maximum damage. There. Now we're going up to the 38 caliber, an old standby police caliber. We're going to use a 158 grain lead bullet at about 850 feet per second. But now we're going to use a more powerful 38 bullet, the jacketed soft point bullet. This is a 110 grain Super Bell, which is about 1,250 feet per second. Now we're going to try the 38 special Glazer safety slug. This is an even lighter bullet at 85 grains, going at much faster, about 1,400 feet per second. Now we're with the 38 Super. This is a 38 caliber bullet made for an automatic. A very powerful bullet. This is a full metal jacketed bullet, which is at 1150 feet per second, 130 grain bullet. Now we're going to try the 9 millimeter full metal jacket. This is probably the most popular military cartridge in the world. This is a 123 grain bullet at 1,125 feet per second. This is a 9 millimeter Super Bell. It's a 112 grain bullet jacketed hollow point at about 1,300 feet per second. Now we'll try the 9 millimeter Glazer Safety Slug. Now we're going to use the 357 Magnum. This is a 158 grain bullet at about 1,400 feet per second. Now we're going to try the Superbell Jacketed Hollow Point, 110 grain at about 1,550 feet per second. Very powerful bullet. And now the 357 Magnum Glazer Safety Slug. This is an 80 grain bullet at about 2,000 feet per second. This is the 45 ACP, one of the most famous rounds in the world, one of the most popular rounds in the world. It's a 230 grain bullet which travels at about 850 feet per second. 45 caliber silver tip made by Winchester. It's a very popular police round currently. It's an 185 grain bullet traveling at about 970 feet per second. This is the Super Bell Jacker's hollow point in 45 caliber. This is a 185 grain bullet at about 1,000 feet per second. This is the Glazer. 
45 caliber bullet. It's about an 80 grain bullet at about 1,200 feet per second. This is a gun. This is a model 29, 44 Magnum, 8 and 3 inch barrel. Probably the most powerful handgun in the world. We're going to shoot a jacketed hollow point, 240 grain bullet, at about 1,400 feet per second. And now we're going to try the 44 Magnum Glazer safety slug. It's about 158 grain bullet at about 1,800 feet per second. The old nickel-plated model 29 will do the job. Yeah. to meet the requirements of the revolution in the new context. People should keep distance with those who On the eve of World War I, Đạo đức văn hóa luôn cần 
wife follows dead.
Hey, Larry, it's a simulation. I got Jim. This is Charlie. samples uh, destroy everything. Checking something. Just a moment. The crowd is all around her. Oh, yes. She is rechecking their tickets. I'm trying to figure out what she's going to do with the small two-edged sword she's carrying. She reaches out, and she has cut all earthly burdens from their bags. We should have known. After all, where these are going, earthly burdens can never come.
force I wish we had an occupying force in there but for some reason I don't know what it is the difference between the beginning and the end There's a chance we still might find her. Engine will chase that thing till he thinks he's chased it enough. He quits. Same way when he runs. Seems like he never learns there's such a thing as a critter will just keep coming on. So we'll find him in the end, I promise you. We'll find him. Just as sure as the turning of the earth. Three days of peace and music. We've left Wallkill and are now in White Lake, New York. Certain people of Wallkill decided to try to run us out of town. Our new site, <coughs> it's twice the size of our original site. For openers, I don't know how to work this machine. I'm just astounded at this machine. This is the silliest way I've ever known of spending the nights alone talking to yourself into an obvious Nazi machine. This is a red China man. Turian candidate machine because I can't get anything on tape and when I do record anything I automatically erase it and I'm sitting in a room all by myself ho ho boy and across the room on my library shelf are about 35 tapes of shows that I've done for CBS hmm hmm now, in those boxes, hold the tapes. My life depends on those, and yet I don't know how to work. That's not my business. I was trying to be a singer. I don't know how to read notes. I can't read music. And I don't, I can't count too well. And I don't know how to work this machine. But that's the story of my life. You go with it even if you don't know what's going on. Keep talking, singing, smiling, and taping. Somebody tell me that this uh, might be interesting. But I've gotten so involved with this Donovan's brain machine. Tape machine. It should be Johnson and Johnson's tape. My wounds, I'd like to tame. But I just am trying to get a few thoughts done, and I'm all by myself, uh, as usual, and trying to go straight with myself. Now, that makes you feel kind of dumb. <laughs> you can, I can't, I can't find my glasses to read the directions. I don't know what 33 and a third means. That just means out of sync to me. And uh, then they got all kinds of kind of early <laughs> Franz Joseph directions that uh, I'm not equipped for. I have done, believe me, I have done 
two. What do they call it? Spools of tape of talking. I think I erased the whole thing and just Peggy Lee and myself came on in a rehearsal tape that played backwards. I wonder if Sid Luft's mother makes these machines. Could be. She made all those machines. She made Sid. She spawned him in the the uh, Red Sea somewhere, I think. But to, um, yeah, let's just think about my trying to be heard. Do you realize how many people have talked about me, written about me, imitated me, told my children that they really know me? They know Judy Garland. My little girl, Liza, came home one day from school. She was about 10 years old, and she said... What is this? Is it, is she has a lovely kind of Italian indi indignation, that, uh, indignity, I should say. <laughs> you see, I can't read, write, or talk too well. Uh, but it's all in the machine. Uh, maybe Madison Avenue puts out these machines. Yeah. Webster and Madison. At any rate, Liza came home from school one day and said, uh, what, are, what is this nonsense that I always hear at school that everybody knows you, Judy Garland? Everybody knows Judy, but they, are, but they really know her. No, they really know her. They knew her when she lived in Transylvania. They had the house next door, and they heard all the, the uh, insanity of, of uh, Mama. And Liza looked at me and simply said, Look, I don't know you, Mama, and nobody ever will. I never will. <laughs> That's my girl. Well, we know each other pretty well. I'm rather proud of that. So far, I think I'm on a blank tape. I don't know. And I might admit defeat at this point. I doubt it. I have a tenacity of a praying mantis. Uh, with a little black Irish witch involved. Let's see if we got anything. Hmm? Testing, uh, one, two, three, four. Eyes only. Um, our eyes. Uh, 
Pagano, a member of the KPFA Local Station Board. I'm also a graduate of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. The program is now accepting applications from community members. You can get information and download an application at kpfaapprentice.org or call 510-848-6767, extension 235. Thank you. Thank you to all of our loyal listeners who continue to amaze us. You keep KPFA from yielding, sinking, or losing our courage to be truly independent. You bolster and sustain us. No other public radio station can truly say this and know it's true, that we are proudly listener-supported. Thanks again from all of us here at KPFA. Dear KPFA listeners, this is Mitch Cesarich, and I want to let you know, due to the shelter-in-place mandate, KPFA has made changes to our programming schedule to ensure we're doing all we can to protect our staff and keep the station work environment safe. To follow the mandate, KPFA programmers will broadcast remotely from home, and we will replay programming in the nighttime hours when our building is closed. We're doing all we can to continue to provide you with important coronavirus information, As conscientious citizens, we must first protect the health and safety of our KPFA community. Thank you for supporting 94.1 FM and listening to KPFA. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online worldwide at kpfa.org. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
just a section. The Lord turns me on. There's no escaping it. Glory, glory, here's to my sweet Satan. I want to live and die for you. You make me sad whose power is Satan. Okay, go again for the second time. Hear me, Lord, hear me. <laughs> Stella. If at any time it does not pass a test, immediately stop its tests. I'm halfway through it. Our numbers are going like crazy, people. All right, all right, here's the problem what we got today. We have information that's not allowed to be told to you. Are we in America yet? 666. It's not just in China, everybody. It's here in the and, United States. And here's the thing. Yeah, it says coronavirus crematorium. <laughs> I want to live with you, understand. I want to live with you, understand all you old salt. And this will be the whole thing together, real slow. Oh, 
Back to the second page.
I've seen that a lot. Uh, burning bodies. His employees are literally sleeping at the crematorium. I feel a real weight yeah. for what could be taking place yeah. in the world. Yeah. Literally in the next few weeks. Yeah. The, the amount of, of affected people has been doubling. Every, what, six yeah. to 12 hours, it's, du it's doubling, yeah. doubling, yeah. doubling, yeah. doubling, doubling. But when, but when I told you, Lori, and I said, honey, we've got the food, and what we will do, we will have to, we just lock up the house. 
Nobody can get in. No, you did. Yeah. You can't go to the mailbox. You can't go talk to the mailman. You yeah. love to talk to people. I can't do it. I can't do it. You yeah. love to talk to the mailman. So tell me again. our young people in avoiding this wholesale slaughter of billions of human lives annually. The Dory Corporation is introducing the all-new Dory Pocket Sex Diverter, a remarkably simple device that plays an effective motivational recording developed especially by leading psychologists from around the world. Thinking about masturbating? Simply click on the Pocket Sex Diverter, listen, and be safe. Only we offer this exclusive radio demonstration. Think about a nasty girl. Would you like me? I'm really nasty. Quick! Turn on your dirty pocket sex converter and listen. This is one, two, four, three, eight, monster, inch, four, move forward. This is really going to feel good. The woman squealed. The obvious one. As her midsection suddenly became transformed into a commercial ice crusher. Hello. I'm a girl. I'm fat and sticky. Hey, I'm marching along, <laughs> sing a song. I really feel great, don't matter, babe. Hi, this is Leonard W. Kramer, President of the United States Steel Corporation. I do not masturbate. Although I could if I wanted to, I don't. I am the President and Chief Operating Executive of the United States Steel Corporation. Smart kids don't do it. Leonard W. Kramer doesn't do it either. Remember what God says. Girls are nasty. Boy, I feel better now. Hey, let's play some ball. All right. Hey, hey, all right. Hey, hey, come on, come on, run up. Hey, 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 all right. All right. The Dirty Pocket Sex Diverter works, and God knows it. Don't risk having to explain why you don't have one on Judgment Day. Order your Dirty Pocket Sex Diverter now.
do you think it would be a better idea if we abolished all sort of countries and just returned to a society of hermits? information I'm reading is e even if the plague doesn't go as bad as they feel it could, it can cause worldwide st starvation. That's right. That's is that right? right? Here's the only product, and I, this is insanity. God gave us this product, yes. I believe. Yes. Well, let's say it hasn't been tested on this strain of the coronavirus, but it's been tested on other strains yeah. of the coronavirus. And you can put it now, in anything. You can put it in any drink. I give it to my little daughter. I just let her drink it right from the bottle. Oh, yeah. However much she wants, she can have it. That's you know? right. It has the ability to kill every pathogen it has ever been tested on, including SARS and HIV and other strains yeah. of the coronavirus. It's been tested on the SARS it, it, virus. It, it, people, it's not... You know, people say, well, we don't want you to get panicked. Well, the thing of it is, I want you to be prepared. Right. Order it now.
extremely negative and uh, negative, right? Negative. Is that the term you use for this, right? Negative. Totally negative and uh, negative, right? Negative. Is that the term you use for this, right? Negative. Totally negative and uh well i think that was uh pretty successful don't you so far so good yeah good work ladies and gentlemen so um let's just make sure that we didn't leave anything inside you got all the sponges and uh, oh there it is okay. uh, nurse can you hand me that medical adhesive here Wait, he's losing his vitals. Somebody get. Damn it! Oh, come on, somebody just hit him. Hit him again. Come on, it's not going. 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 It's not going.
baby, we're saved. The others are ecstatic, but I can't be so sure. They dock their dusty turbans and begin to play with an adorable bear cub who's just bounded out of the ready throne. Everyone is so happy, so happy to know. No, no, don't, it's not safe because I learned on the Discovery Channel that you can't play with a bear cub whenever there's a bear cub. Yes, I see her now running, racing down the mountain. Next to us, the biggest, most monstrous looking grizzly mother, grizzly bear. The others have stopped. Don't you guys, don't mess with that baby bear. But it's too late. The mother bear's here, but she's not mad at them. She isn't mad at me. She's chasing me. No, 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 no. I'm in touch. Don't, no, I know it's useless, but I run. I'm running into the shallow river that's full of salmon. Spawning upstream, spawning upstream. I'm running downstream. Running is not me. I try to tell her it's them. I didn't touch her, but she doesn't care. It's me she's after, and I'm doomed, but still I run. Run along the riverbed, up the banks through the woods, and into the high school auditorium perched on the beaver dam nearby. Through the double doors, down the puke green corridor, through the classroom, trying to lose her. Running from the mother bear. She's vicious, insane. She's gonna kill me, consume me. I can't lose her. She has my scent and money. Desperate, I duck into the little boy's room, and there's my salvation in the little boy's room. The tiny window with the porcelain moth face, and in the little boy's room, the tiny window with the factory light glass. The opening that's so hard to squeeze through, but I can do what I can. I can squeeze through it, and I'll be free. I'll be safe. I'll be free. I open the tiny window with the factory light glass. The tiny window, only to find another window. Another window with a Face down. And that, okay. Seems like 
there's something stuck. Uh, it's not going in. Are you sure? Okay. How do you... Hey, do you know if the coffee grounds go in the top part or the filtery looking thing? Um, I don't really know uh, anything about that. So, I, uh, sorry. That's okay. I will totally figure it out. Okay. I haven't had my afternoon. Whatever, it's fine. Oh. I've got an I gotta make another pot. No, if it's a problem. I got I'll... it. Whatever. It's gonna be a minute. Oh. Hey, just step yeah, right over there. Sure. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the play will be starting in exactly three minutes, so please take your seat. Um, miss, the show's about to start. Just a second, sir. But he gave me a dollar and I made it already. You know what? Never mind. I'll figure it out. I'm real sorry. Uh... Did you have anything? We can make bread. Did you have anything for? I'm not in the mood. Did you have anything for science today? We're no. just checking attendance. Just attendance. Okay, let's just take a break from that. Uh, what we're mainly working on, as far as theory, if it comes up or whatever, you see the app. Chat messages happen. That's too. That's too. That's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, 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 If I just uh, get a refill on the coffee. So you guys want to cruise? That's yes. right. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, we're so excited because Jim's never been on a cruise before. Never. So you guys are gonna have a great time. It's it's a lot of fun. When do you leave? Tomorrow. It's good to get away. Cruises are great, they say, because you you actually physically separate from the coast. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, going for a week. We yeah. need it. Big Thank time. You. There'll be no cruise for you, sir. Ugh. Ugh. What a weird thing to have happen. What? Yeah, I, I don't know either. I, let's just hope it never happens again. Um, ugh. Hey, I'm really sorry uh, that this happened, and uh, thanks for having me over. And, uh, nice to meet you. Xenophobic. Town in San Francisco at the same time. <laughs> ah, this is my guy. <laughs> the twins, they call us. So, uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a very sad, a very sad thing. So, I'm not uh, happy with the World Health Organization. And guess what? There's some of the people around this table who would understand being an 
a business, in some cases international. I'm not happy with the World Trade Organization at all either. Wait.
to what boats. Okay, here comes one. Say. Well, it's uh, it's not a major deterrent, really, is it? I mean, it's for a psychiatrist to deter these things, isn't it? And they are very nice people. Oh, it's all right, isn't it? Well, it's like a rabbit. He's got a head on him like a rabbit. Oh, no. Yeah. Not normal people do. Not running around in your like a cool milkshake right now. But you need to shave first, right? Right. And the only way to do that is with our easy organic protein 21 body lather and conditioner in one. Please we combine my together. Trial and error method of analysis of the various species. If you're a man who likes gray with his oatmeal, you're sure to like Uncle Johnny's corn pone squeezing made with pure gogo -go extract. Nobody would dare pay over $34 for a cheeseburger deluxe, so why should you? So come on, tough guy, join in the fun today, so you won't be left out. Pick up a six-pack today. Now back to our movie. Your number one Bushmiller dealer has been holding a garage sale to clean out his stock of 1975 Bushmillers, which is now being interrupted by a police action. The high geek has asked for a reveal of the 7% suicide tax on Americans, effective July 15th. If this tax is repealed by Congress, the full amount will be refunded to buyers of 1976 Bushmillers purchased after April 15th. Depending upon the model selected, this means an extra savings of up to 200 mils, which will be refunded directly to buyers by Bushmillers.
Your Bushmiller dealer was having a garage sale, and you could get great year-end deals on any new Bushmiller, Navels, Turnips, Vibratos, and all the other great 1975 models your Bushy dealer has in stock. Now, on top of that, a possible extra savings with a proposed suicide tax rebate, a proposed tax refund, and a heroin sale. Now, at your Bushmiller dealers. And, uh... Hey, if you are feeling isolated and you would like some emotional support, the Mental Health Association of San Francisco is running a non-emergency emotional support warm line. They've got people who are available to talk with you over instant message or over the phone. That number is 855-845-7415. And that is available to people anywhere in California. Again, that is the non-emergency emotional support warm line at 855-845-7415. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline, which is an emergency number, is at 1-800-273-8255. Remember to be kind to each other and to be kind to yourself. This is Chris Hedges. When I'm in Berkeley, I always listen to KPFA because I do not want my news and information given to me through the lens of corporate power. KPFA is an absolutely vital organization within your community, one that keeps journalism alive and gives voice to those who otherwise would have no voice. Please donate what you can today. Hi, this is Roxanne Dunbar-Ortiz. In these difficult times, I cannot imagine living in this world without KPFA. We must support KPFA. Please donate what you can today. Thank you. Donate today at kpfa.org. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 88.1 KFCF in Fresno and online at kpfa.org.